Hi there, it's Jim from Janku, and today I'm going to look at promises in JavaScript. Now, what is a promise? In JavaScript, a promise is an object that will be resolved or rejected in the future. So this is great for things like asynchronous actions where you're not sure how long something is going to take to complete, like calling out to a JSON API to get information. And promises really aren't as scary as they sound on the surface. So let's hop in and take a look at a simple example to demonstrate how to use a promise in JavaScript. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to bump up my code editor here so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm just going to open up a terminal at the bottom here. So let's take a simple example. Let's say that I loaned money out to somebody and they promised to return that money at some point in the future. We can illustrate this example using JavaScript promises. So let's start by creating a new variable here. Let's create a, a variable called payback. And now this represents the promise to pay me back my money. And then we can use the new keyword and create a new promise. And that promise will take a function that has two parameters. So it has a resolved and a reject parameter, as you can see listed here. So it's a typical naming convention to call these resolve and reject. But you really could name these whatever you want. For instance, you could call it res and reg for short. And then you could write your function out like this. Now, inside the body of this function, that's where you actually determine the conditions where something is resolved or rejected. So we could create a variable called has money. And we could say true and then make an if statement and say, if the person has money, then we are going to resolve this. Let's say, here's your money back. But if they don't have money, make an else statement, then we reject it and we say, sorry, I can't pay you back right now. Okay, so those are the two different states here. Now let's go and look at actually modernizing some of this code. So in order to get block scoping with our variables, we're actually going to use the let keyword. And I'm gonna use that here on this variable as well. And then instead of using this anonymous function here, we can actually use the new arrow function syntax. So I can come up here and I can remove this function keyword and I can just add this fat arrow syntax here like that. And it does the same thing. So we still have two parameters here and we're returning this information here. So let's go and run this here. And the way you run a promise, so I, I get my variable, my payback variable, and then I would use the then keyword here. Now then we'll take a function as well. And the parameter here will be a message. And then we just want to console log our message. So let's do that. Now let's save this and let's run this and see what we get here. I'm going to first make sure that I'm on my desktop and then I'm going to run promises.js and it says, here's your money back. Okay, that's awesome. Now let's come up here and let's change this function syntax to use our arrow functions. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm going to get rid of the function keyword again, and I'm just going to change this to use an arrow. And now one thing you can do with arrow functions is there's only one parameter here, you actually don't need these parentheses. So I can get rid of that and simplify that a little bit. And I'm just going to get rid of this as well. And let me just save that and let's run that one more time, make sure it still runs. Okay, so we have, here's your money back down here, great. Now, what happens if we come back up to our code here and we say that the person does not have money? So we say false. So as you would expect, this enters a reject statement here. Now, we're not handling the reject statement right now. So if we actually try to run this, we're gonna get an error. So let's try to run it. Now you can see here, we're rejecting a promise that was not handled by catch. So just like we have the then keyword, to get our resolution of the promise, we actually need a catch keyword to get the rejection. So let's do a dot catch here. And similarly, we're going to take a function callback here, and I'm gonna hop right into using the arrow syntax. So for here, I'm just going to say error, that is the argument. And 
then I'm going to console log. And you don't need these curly brackets either if it's just a single line statement. So I'm just going to do console.log the error that I'm passing and then save this. Let's come down here and let's run this. Okay, so now we get sorry, I can't pay you back right now. Let's format some of this code to make it a little easier to read. So one way you might see these things laid out is often they'll bring these then and catch statements down to new lines. So let's press enter. I'm just going to tab in and then I'm going to bring this chain down to the next line as well. And then, like I said previously, since this is all one line, we don't need these curly brackets here. We can actually just simplify this to look like this. And let's just save that. Let's run this again, make sure it's all still working. Sorry, I can't pay you back right now. And then if we come up to the top here and we change this to true again, and we run that, here's your money back. Let's go over what we're doing here one more time. So we are getting a promise of a payback for money. So we lent somebody out money and they're promising to pay it back. Now, we're not sure if they're going to actually be able to pay it back. So it's determined whether they have money or not. So if they have money, they'll give it back. And if they don't have money, they reject it. When we run this at some later time in the future, we check and say, hey, do they have money when we're trying to get our money back? If they do, then we say then, and that gives us our resolve call here and we get our money back. And if we don't get that resolved, then we go to our catch where we actually go to our rejection statement here. Let's add a little more information to this to make this example a little bit more robust. So I'm going to hop up to my code and let's say we're lending this money out to a specific person. So you might know Stephanie from our channel. Hey there, it's Stephanie from Janku. And let's just say that we're lending this out to Steph. So we're going to create a new variable here called Steph's money. And let's say that Stephanie actually doesn't have any money at the moment. So we're going to lend money out to Stephanie. She doesn't have any at the moment, but we know that she has a good job and she'll get paid at some point in the future. And since we're good friends with Stephanie, we actually know her payment schedule. So let's take a look at this. So let's check what day of the week it is so we can check if Stephanie is getting paid today or not. So I'm going to create a new variable. I'm going to call it today. And then I'm going to set it to a new date object. So we have this date object here. And then we can have a method on this called to locale date string. And if we use that, you can see the first option that they want in here is a locale. So we're going to use US English. And then we can pass an options object here. The only option we want to pass here uses the weekday key. And we want to make sure we're getting that in long format. So once we have that, we can console log out the today variable. So let's do a console.log and let's put today in there. And let's save that and then let's come back down here and run this just to see what value we're getting there. Okay, so today is Tuesday and here's the money back. This is still running the promise here. But let's do a check here and see what day Stephanie gets paid. So I'm actually just going to simulate this by adding a switch statement here. So I'm going to write switch and we're going to switch on today. And then the cases in here are going to be the days of the week. So the first case is going to be Monday. And on Monday, we'll just say that Steph's money is plus equal to zero, meaning she does not get paid on Monday. And let's just copy this out a couple different times. Okay, so we have seven days a week. And then let's just add all the days in here. Okay, so we have all our days of the week now. And we're going to say on Tuesday, since that's today, let's just say that's her payday. And on Tuesday, she makes $500. Okay, so that's good. And then let's just check again. Let's check what Steph's money is. So we know it starts at zero. Let's make sure that it actually gets paid. So we're doing that switch statement. Let's just console log that down here. So we'll do a console.log of Steph's money. And let's run our code again, make sure we're getting the correct value there. Okay, so Steph's money is at $500 because she got paid today. That's great. So how do we actually go about adding this information to our promise here? So we can do that with a couple simple steps. And we really need to do here is we need to wrap this promise in another anonymous function. 
and then we need to use that as a way to pass arguments into that function. Okay, I'm back. I had to hop on a quick phone call, but let's just see where we were here. So we're trying to wrap this promise in a function here that we can then use to pass the Steph's money variable, which we're defining up here in a different logic structure. So let's go about doing that. So instead of just returning this new promise to the payback variable, let's add a function here, and we'll just call this anonymous function. And we'll wrap it like this, and I'll end that function there. And then let's just come in here and let's return this, and let's just format this a little bit here. Let's come in here and let's add the Steph's money parameter here. And we can change this to be the arrow syntax as well. So we can get rid of this whole function keyword and we could add the arrow syntax there. And now if we come back down here and we were to try to run this, we would get an error. So if we came down here and you run it, you see we get this error now. So it says then is not a function. So since we've wrapped this in a function here, we can come here and we actually have to pass that argument now, the Steph's money argument here. And if you save that, and we run this again, this is how you adjust the actual handling of this promise. And this is how you would wrap the promise in a function that allows you to pass this parameter into the function to be used. So let's go ahead and actually update this. So right now it's still hard-coded with the has money variable, but let's actually use Steph's money here. So let's come in here, we can get rid of this has money here, and we can say Steph's money is greater than, and let's just say the original amount I lent to Stephanie was $100. So if it's greater than 100, then she can give me my money back. And if it's not, then we have to reject and say, sorry, I can't pay you back. So if we come and we run this again, we say, okay, here's your money back. Great, so we have this resolving because Stephanie got paid on Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. She got $500, so we know that she has $500 in bank account, which is more than enough to pay my $100 back. Now, let's just say she got a pay cut and she only makes $50 a day instead of $500. So if we save that, so she did get paid today, but her bank account is not enough to pay back the principal here. So if we come and we run this now, it says $50, and sorry, I can't pay you back right now. Now that's a quick overview of how to set up these promises. And what you're probably thinking is, well, that's kind of cool, but what about a real world implementation of how to use this? Let's look at getting data from a JSON API in order to demonstrate how this will work. So I'm going to go over to Firefox and I have a website up here called the JSON placeholder.typeycode.com. And now this is a JSON API that you can use for testing purposes. And if you come down here, they have a great easy example here of how to get started. So it uses fetch to fetch this URL from their website, which is a JSON endpoint. And then it gets a response. And then that response, they console.log the JSON to the console. Now this uses promises in a couple of different ways. So let's just take a look at how to do it. But before we hop in, let's just look at what this data looks like. So if we grabbed this URL here and we were to put it up here, you can see that we have this JSON response. Now you could actually view the raw data if you want, so you can see it's just a regular JSON object here. Or you could use this viewer here to, to dive into things. So now this is a to-do app and it has the first item of the to-do list right here, so that's where the one comes in. If you were to get rid of this, you could see all the to-dos in the list, so you can see this long JSON blurb and you could, again, you could use this little viewer to expand and collapse different sections of this to view the data. Or we could view any specific one of these items. So we could say, give us the fifth item and it would show that exact item there. So what they're doing in this example here is they're saying, okay, let's go to this endpoint. Let's get the response and then let's get the JSON out of that response. And then let's log that to the console so we can see what that data looks like. Let's go through and actually show what this does. So. If I grab this fetch here and I come over to my empty Firefox window, I'm just going to do a control shift K to open up my console. And then I'll just bump this up so you can see what I'm doing here. And let's just grab this and expand it. 
So if I come in here and if I were to paste this into my console here, and let's just fix the spacing here, and you'll notice that this is actually returning a promise. So the way that we deal with the promise, and you can see over here from the documentation, is they use the then keyword to get a response from that. And let's do that real quick. So we come in here and we use the then keyword. We get a response. And then we run a response.json on that response there. Now something interesting is happening with this response JSON. So let's just take a look at what that is. Let's console.log this response JSON. So you notice there's two promises here. Now, not only does fetch return a promise, but when you run the .json method here, you get a second promise. And let's just take a look at the API docs here. So we're running the JSON method on the body, and that returns a promise as well. And then we're chaining our then statements to get the resolve of that second promise. So if you come in here, you can see that we're, we're getting the promise from the fetch, we're getting the JSON that returns another promise, and then we're getting the actual JSON and logging that information to the console. So if we grab this whole bit of code here, and we were put that in here, you can see that we actually log out this object here that has the information that we want to get out of this object. And now this corresponds to exactly what we were looking for up here if we go to the first to do here. So that's a quick real world example of how you might use promises using the fetch API. Now, if you want a deeper understanding about what is actually being returned here and how we're unpacking these promises, there's a great video here that I stumbled across by Manning Publications. I definitely recommend checking this out and I'll link to this in the description of this video so you can have easy access to it. But this really goes into some detail about how these promises are returned and how you can get the information out of those. So it's a really helpful video and I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching our video on promises. Hopefully this was a helpful JavaScript tutorial for you. If you like this kind of content, please give us a thumbs up so YouTube knows to share this with other folks and subscribe to our channel if you want to check out more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching and we'll be in touch soon. Take care.